All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the true, sincere brethren around the four corners, pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with the word, and to the rest of the church who believe, and the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him, none of this would even be possible. Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. So when we say that we are Israelites, we are not speaking of the landmass known as Israel. Although that is our land, typically, Israel is a people before it is a place. Jacob, okay, had his name changed to Israel. So through Jacob is where you get something known as the Israelites. And God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. So that's where we are today. Israel has become a huge nation of people that cannot be numbered. Okay? Some of us don't even look Negro, Latino, or Native. Some of us look Chinese, Japanese. Some of us look Arab, Arabic. Okay? And so on. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. Okay? So, yes, we are a nation of kings. Kings shall come out of thy loins. So, through the seed of Jacob was going to be a company of nations going into Israel being dispersed throughout the whole entire earth. We are in all nations. And some of us even look like the other nations. Okay? And the land which I have given Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, Jacob down to his seed, that's where, uh, that, that's who the land of Israel belongs to. So when we say that we are Israelites, we are saying that we come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob had his name turn to Israel and it also said to you know be fruitful and multiply we know Negroes Latinos and Native Americans love having sex we are a very fruitful people even going into the name Ephraim itself means fruitful okay so we are a fruitful people and the land of Israel was given to us because we are of the seed of Jacob now when you go into that word seed says uh, Zerah, but going into the definition, seed, sowing, offspring. So we are the offspring of Jacob, okay? A sowing, seed, semen, virile, offspring, descendants, posterity, children. So long story short, we are the offspring or we are produced through the semen of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob which means this is a bloodline. This is not a religion, as the world calls it. But this is a bloodline. This is about genetics. Okay? Exodus 3 and 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And remember, Jacob had his name changed to Israel. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So Yahweh is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being synonymous for Israel. He is the God of the Israelites. So being a God of the Israelites, he was... Um, um, his, his favorite nation of people, his decision on his own was the nation of Israel. Okay, 
Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah is not going to change his mind. So when we say that we are Israelites, this is not our religion. This is our heritage. This is our nationality. Okay? Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And it references here all men. Because you are a Israelite based off of your father's genetic line. Okay? And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Jump into Exodus 4, and I'll jump down to verse 5. Exodus 4 and 5. Let's start at 4. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and he became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. So once again, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai is not the God of you Egyptians, a.k.a. you Hamites, you Africans. He is not the God of you Moabites, you Chinese people. He is only the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So if you don't uh, consider yourself an Israelite, this Bible really has nothing to do with you whatsoever. Okay? That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, synonymous for Israel, hath appeared unto thee. So Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Jump to Psalms 149. And let's start at 1. Psalms 149 and 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. And the saints are Israelites, by the way. Okay. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. So Zion and Israel are synonymous. Those are the same people. Okay. Israel is the Lord's monument, which the word Zion means monument. Okay? Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. So the Lord's people is who? Well, when you go to verse 2, it says Israel. That's why it says in verse 2, Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful. So jumping back to verse 4, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, his people being Israel, he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints, who are Israelites, be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So long story short, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai's people are Israelites. And there's going to come a day where we are literally going to have two-edged swords in our hand executing judgment upon you heathens who are not Israelites. Because, see, you people have to understand that this book is all about Israel. Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, did not come for you heathens. This whole book is about Israel from beginning to end. All right. Israel, Israel, Israel. For some reason, you people are so stupid that you can't even acknowledge something that is written over and over and over and over and over again. OK, which shows the Lord ain't dealing with the majority of you people. This is all about Israel, man. OK, you heathens have no doing with our culture, with our customs with our heritage okay so the next verse i want to jump to is in hebrews 13 and i believe it's verse 20 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus whose real name is yahweh shai that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant so yahweh shai represents the new covenant he was the blood of the everlasting covenant which means this new covenant is not going to end it's everlasting typically the first covenant never ended 
It's just Yahweh Shai came and he was the ultimate sacrifice. But the covenant is still made with Israel. So through the blood of the everlasting covenant, being Yahweh Shai, we are able to receive salvation. We are able to be redeemed, not the heathens. Okay, although uh, two thirds of our people live like the heathens, they are still Israelites and they are going to be uh, in the kingdom reigning with us. But they will not go in the kingdom without suffering that shame as well for a while. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus or Yahweh Shai, to be more exact, that great shepherd of the sheep and who are the sheep? The sheep are the children of Israel. He's not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, okay? Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So let's go to Isaiah, okay? And I'll close out here because I have to go to work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isaiah 49, and uh, let's start at 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel. Not the Redeemer of everybody, but the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Okay, so the nation of Israel are the chosen people, okay? Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, who? The Israelites, because salvation is given to Israel. I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. So Yahweh Shai's blood, okay, represents that new covenant. Now the covenant was established for Israel. So seeing that we are the Lord's chosen people, who are you heathens to try to take our customs and our culture and then look down upon the actual people of the Lord like we're just niggas, like we're just spicks. Even uh, Israelites look at other Israelites like they're nothing, okay? We are the Lord's people. We are the greatest people on earth. And Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai sent Yahweh Shai to redeem Israel. That's why it says in 7, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One. Okay, we are the Lord's holy people. To be holy, it means you're separate. That's why it's, uh, the, the good book is known as the Holy Bible. Okay, this book is separate from all books. This isn't anything like you've read before. And if you have read anything similar to the Bible, it is because it is a carbon copy or a a uh, a, a, a remake. Pretty much a, a lesser value of the real thing. But this is the only book that is that is according to the words of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai and accurate. This is the only book of prophecy. Okay, this book is prophetic. Within this book is spirit and, and, and life. Okay. So I'm going to read 7 through 8 again. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him who the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. So Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is the Holy One of Israel. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, synonymous for Israel. Thus saith the Lord in an acceptable time, have I heard thee and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And that's coming up again. Okay, the Lord's truly going to help us in these times to come. And, and, and once we get through all of it, ultimately we are going to receive salvation because we are the Lord's people that he chose from the very beginning above all nations on the earth. Okay, and I will preserve thee preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages that thou mayest say to the prisoners who are us go forth to them that are in darkness show yourself show show yourselves 
they shall feed in the ways and their pastors shall be in high places. So our people are prisoners who are in darkness. So that's why we're trying to tell you that you need to come back to your custom. And the reason why you've been brought low, or even if you're doing well, but others of our own nation are doing so bad, is because of the curses. And we have to turn back to our power. This book has nothing to do with no heathens in terms of salvation or redemption. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is only sent... Uh, uh, he, he only sent his son, Yahweh Shai, through his blood to redeem Israel. Okay. The new covenant still goes to Israel and you can find that in Hebrews eight. All right. So I'm going to close out here. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of great millstone. Salutations to all the true sincere brethren around the four corners, pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with the word. And to the rest of the church who believe and the water to Yahweh Shai, because without that man, none of this would even be possible. Shalom.